Welcome back to The Couch here on Aurora Television on Foxtel. As you know, I'm a very strong uh, student of physics and science, not. But UWA have been wonderful because they've been trying to train me in all the... The, the information that we give out to you in physics and science. And today we've got Peter with us from UWA. Hello, Peter. Hello, thank you. Thanks for coming in. No worries. Thanks Tell for us about me. Peter. Um, so I'm a research fellow at the University of Western What's Australia. What's a research fellow? Someone who does research. So we're trying to answer questions which haven't been answered before or maybe using answers to develop new applications. Who asks you these questions, Peter? We often ask ourselves the questions and then we try and ask the government to see if they would like to fund that because it might be helpful, helpful and, to society. And our government here in WA sometimes says yes? Um, sometimes says yes, but it's often at a national level, so the Australian government, federal Fantastic. government. Fantastic. And, and you're part of UWA, obviously. Yes. Now, do you teach other people as well? I have done some teaching this year, not so much, but usually, yes. You're a good fellow. That's why uh, they call you a that, fellow. That's it. That's it. Charlton's with us as well. Hello, Charlton. Thank you very much. You've got it. some questions for Peter? I do, yes. Just before you do that, what are we actually going to do today? What are, what are we trying to allow our audience to understand. So I work in magnetism, so very small magnets, and yep. so we're going to go everywhere from showing what I actually work on through to hard drives, which are examples of magnets in everyday life, through to mm -hmm. trying to move a tomato if it All works. Right. Sounds interesting. I'll play around here while you guys talk. Then over to you, Charles. No so, Peter, what I'd like to know is what's so important about magnetism? So magnetism, well, in terms of what people can actually relate to every day, yep. it's in everybody's hard drives and their computer. That's how we store data. So storing your photos, for example, on your computer. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of newer applications that are coming out, for example, in sensors or even new types of electronics. Wow. Could you take us through some of your success you've had in your research? Yeah, so um, I actually used to work on a lot of fundamental magnetism, mm -hmm. but I've now actually gone a lot more applied. Um, and so I'm actually making sensors for nanoparticles that we hope to use in medical diagnostics. And so we've shown that the basic physics works now, and so now we want to make a useful device. Awesome. So take us through how that works. So essentially, you can imagine if you want to do diagnostics, you typically want to find some disease marker. It could be a protein in your blood. And so magnetic biosensing works by sticking a little magnet onto that protein. And then if you find the magnet, you find the protein, you can diagnose that disease. Sure. Have you got any of the magnets here that we can have a look at? Um, we've actually got a little prototype, very there? basic sensor. Um, and so that, probably all we can see there are very, maybe very, very tiny electrical is, contacts. Is it the little silver thing in the middle? Um, it's actually all the little gold gold pads Let's there. Show us again with your finger so Adrian can pick that little up. Little tiny gold pads just there, which we may not pick up. Oh, I've actually got a picture that I've there taken with an electron microscope Let's have a look right at here. that picture. I'll put that up on, on this lovely cooking cam that we've got above us. There's the picture. And so this is actually a disc, which is sort of one of the very basic prototype sensors we're looking at. And so that is about a thousandth of a um, millimetre across. So how does that help us in life? Um, because we can actually, we can do some interesting things with it and actually use it as a, as a sensor for these particles, which we then hope to use for diagnostics. So give me a really simple uh, way that you've actually helped. How would I know as a normal person in the community how you've helped me? Because it's a new um, technology, we're not probably going to help you in the community for another 10, 20 years. Well, I'll go away then. <laughs> I'll take my picture and go. Now tell me, is it is it difficult to work with something you can't see? Um, in principle, yes, but we've got a lot of tools to help us. So we, we can use, for example, electron microscopes to look at things that normally we couldn't see with an optical microscope. We've got lots of tools to make things at that scale as well. Cool. How long has this research been in, I guess, its founding and how long have you been working so on it? So we've been working on this for almost three years now. And how much um, longer have you got left to go? we've still got quite a fair way to go. Um, but there's everything from fundamentals, understanding and then optimising and then hopefully making a real device one day. Wow. What we looking at here? So I was saying if we want to actually, we can use things that are called nanoparticles to try and actually tag, um, say, proteins in the blood. And this is actually a picture of some nanoparticles and they're about 10 times smaller than the little disc we just saw earlier. And, and that's these, blood? No, you? this is just in on top of a piece of silicon. These were made okay. by a student at UWA. Wow. And what does that show us? That is the little particle which we might stick onto a protein which might tell us what's wrong with you. You're getting me now, yeah. Okay. Mm. But I yeah, go to Royal Perth thing. Hospital when they do that. Yeah, but they often take a few hours to do it. Oh, that's, so, very, that's what I wanted you to say. Yeah, so, you're so very quick. Yep. So this is, uh, I guess, magnetics that are in our home. Is that yes, correct? absolutely. And this is three different generations three of hard drives. Three different generations. So I thought that was a chainsaw thing, like the grinder thing, but it's not. No. What is that? So, 
If can I'll I can I quickly up. steal this? Put us over here quickly. I'll try and hold it up to camera. So here we've actually got a hard drive which is pretty recent. So that one there is the conventional one that we use every day. That we're using today, and all your data is stored here. Yeah. And it's actually stored by the direction of a little magnetic magnet, yeah. essentially. So that you would normally be in a case, folks. For those people who don't know hard drives, that would normally be in a case, and you would actually have that covered. Don't we? And that's, Absolutely. where's the hard drive itself? So the, the all the data is stored on this platter, which then spins around. So every time you write data, it spins up and you change the magnetization. So it looks very similar to this one. Exactly. But this one's huge. So that's the older version, mm. long time ago, and that would have been one of the platters that's currently in there. Fantastic. And that holds about half of a photo these days. Now what is this thing here? That's a compass. Oh, lovely. Is it so you can find your way out of the studio? That's it. What would you use a compass for? Um, what, usually finding for? direction, but I actually brought it to basically show that when a magnetic particle moves past one of our sensors, yeah, it's kind of, it oh, sorry, it's kind of like a compass because the particle comes past, the compass never goes psh, psh, and we know that a particle is in the blood. Amazing. And it's an essential electronic little sensor. Can we just Amazing quickly before technology. we go, do you want to do this experiment for us? Absolutely. It's quite riveting. So, we get to eat. <laughs> and I'm really hungry and want to eat the tomatoes. There's, um, okay, so what we actually want to do, my magnet is here. So everything that we're used to in terms of magnetism <coughs> are called ferromagnets, like normal magnets stick to the fridge. Mm. But everything actually responds to a magnetic field. So the tomato is shaking around, and I've got a backup experiment here in case it doesn't work. Do but essentially, we can, no, no oh, explosions or anything. We can basically get the tomato, without touching it, <coughs> to rotate around. And it's very slow, it's not exactly thrilling television, but it's actually slowly rotating. We haven't actually touched That's it. Amazing. It's Let's have a look repelled. at these magnets that you've got. Just hold those up to the camera for a moment. Can we just get a shot of those magnets? Look at that tomato when you look at it. Look how that's spinning. If the camera could take a shot of that tomato, you'd see. That is amazing. And this guy works a bit better though, but again, maybe hard to see. Same effect. What is that? I'm going to hold that up to you and you can show it to camera. There we go. Okay. I'll put it here so I can take it. So this is a better dye magnet than a tomato and it actually will levitate. It's above our heads. Great levitation. It is, yeah. Well Cutting done. Edge. I know we're right out of time. If people want to get involved with physics and science, do we know where they go? They go to the physics department. We've got a website, www.physics.uwa.edu.au. In our group, you can look up Spintronics and Perth or Spintronics and UWA. Are you a riveting group? Uh, we try and be riveting. We try do and be attractive. We work with magnets. I was going to say, do you find it's really hard? That, do you magnetise anything towards you? Everyone's uh, repelling. You, you can't actually... One thing with magnets, you can't actually come in if you've got a pacemaker. Really? Because they're, um, yeah, the older ones actually work with magnets. Well, there you go. So there you go. Well, you've got a new student there. He wants to do Wonderful. physics. Yeah, I, I don't think I've day. got the brain for it just yet. <laughs> thank you very much, Charlton. Thank, thank you for thank coming you in today. Thank you very All much. All the best. Cheers. We do experiments. It is an important thing as well in the community. UWA does an amazing job when it comes to physics. They've got a great school there. Please check out their website and uh, get involved. Science is an amazing thing.